I'm Diane Amara. I'm the director here at uh, Angelin College, SBDC. And um, I'm going to ask our panelists to introduce themselves as we go along. But in keeping with what we heard earlier, uh, we're going to do that by just giving our elevator speech. And if you remember, what he said was, keep it simple. And the first thing you say is what people will remember. So I'm with the Small Business Development Center. And our goal is to help future and current business owners start, grow, and succeed. And that's what I want you to remember about us. And as we uh, talk to our panelists today and delve into what it means to be an entrepreneur, what it means to have a business here in our local region, and all the wonderful resources that are available to us and how we can build our communities. That's what we want to get to. And so I'm going to, at this time, ask uh, each one of them to introduce themselves. And I'll start with uh, Sarah. I'm Sarah Carthel. I'm uh, the owner operator at HTO in Nacogdoches. Good evening. Well, yeah, yeah it is almost <laughs> <laughs> afternoon. My name's Bobby Weiss. Uh, myself, along with my wife here, Barbara Weiss, are owners of BRK Meats uh, in Carthage and Tenhall, Texas. Uh, well, greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Seville Harris, and I'm the owner of Big Fellows Barbecue located in Nacogdoches, Texas. Don't you think that's a great name for his business? <laughs> okay, the object of this session is to equip the audience with timely, relevant, and actionable advice to enhance your business growth. The panel did, will discuss, uh, will focus on providing comprehensive insights into various aspects of business planning. We've already heard a lot about that. And you can expect to gain knowledge on critical topics such as writing an effective business plan, selecting an optimal business site, and navigating the process of registering your business, along with a lot of other insights that as only a business owner can that they'll share with you. So our first question, can you provide insight into key aspects of business planning covering topics such as writing an effective business plan, selecting your optimal location, and navigating your process? So uh, the way I want to do this is I want it to be very friendly and interactive, so I'm not assigning a, a question to any specific panelists, just I want them to speak from their experience. And as we go along, if you have a question, a relevant question about the what we are talking about at that point. Please feel free to raise your hand and we'll take those questions. I'll, I'll talk on that just a little bit. Uh, my wife and I had been in previously in a, a totally different business. We came out of healthcare. Um, we were both uh, registered nurses in administration. So uh, this was a different thing for us. So. I can tell you, I was listening to some of the uh, folks, Greg and uh, them talking about your business plans and all. And it is very uh, important to do. Um, working for multi-million dollar companies like I was before, I had no idea how to write my own business plan. So I can tell you right now, it's uh, it, it's with great pleasure that I, I'm thankful to the, the SBDC for being able to provide me with someone that could help me get through that piece of it. Uh, not do it for me, but to be able to take all of the information and the things for my business and be able to put that together and, and present it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would have to say the same thing. Um, you know, our our situation is uh, ours is a franchise, and so we kind of had a lot of that stuff already come from the franchise. There was other owners that I could reach out to, and so we got their copy of their business uh, plan, kind of looked at it and went, oh, okay, this is kind of what it was. Because, again, my background is not in business. I've been a, a collegiate volleyball coach for 20 years before this, and so I knew nothing about it, totally starting out uh, completely and totally new. So so I reached out. I mean, I really relied on um, the other owners and operators that were in the franchise as well as other, um, especially going to the <laughs> Angelina College SBDC, uh, the same thing, um, where they just helped me say, here's what the outline's going to be. These are the things to include in it. 
um, and you really have to do some really good research on it. So that's what we did. Not to beat the horse, but I will say the same thing. Ditto uh, to all those things. Uh, and of course, for me, uh, starting a food truck is a little bit complicated. Uh, so I was uh, working in education, higher education for 12 years. Uh, and then I came, I was like, okay, uh, I want to get a food truck. Uh, and the first thing they said was like, all right, you need a business plan. I was like, what? Okay, what is that? Uh, but I'm a big believer in closed mouths don't get fed. Uh, so, of course, I just started asking questions uh, everywhere I went. Like, hey, how do I do this? Hey, what are the things I need to put on there? Uh, and, of course, getting with the SBDC uh, was able to help me out and get me lined up to where I needed to be uh, in order for me to get the food truck and start on so on so on. Uh, but the good thing about it is, of course, it helps you line out you know, your action plans, what you're supposed to be doing in order for you to be successful in the long run. So I say, you know, I can say it all day, you know, closed mouths don't get fed, right? So you have to keep asking the questions in order to you get to the spot that you need to be in. So continue to reach out in Nacogdoches. There's a lot of great people there at the home office uh, that you're able to go up and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Okay, we're not ready for that yet. Okay, how do I, well, I need you to get ready, and how do I go about in order for me to be successful as a business owner? So, Thank you. Okay, what are some of the challenges in entrepreneurship, and how did you overcome them? They were in three very distinct uh, industries, uh, so those challenges are going to be different. And this might be a place where some of you want to jump in with a question, too, uh, about what your experience as challenges. So we can just kind of brainstorm on that for a minute. All right, uh, challenges. You know, to me, again, starting out, and I'll tell you kind of our situation. My husband's a head football coach at SFA. And so um, I have three littles. I have a nine-year-old, a six-year-old, and a four-year-old. I needed one more thing to do. I mean, just <laughs> one more thing to do is to start a business. Um, that's kind of why we went the franchise route to begin with. Um, my family are educators. I barely have written a $200 check. And so the doubt and the fear of trying to start out was a big challenge for me. And I'm sitting there going, now I'm writing that check with three more zeros on there and feeling a little bit more comfortable going, I need this equipment, I need this uh, maintenance, whatever it is. But that was something my husband, his family was farmers, and so they were good buying a tractor and buying land and everything else and, and living in debt, you know, the American way. Um, but that was, not very, that was not comfortable for me to do. And so the doubt and the fear of going, oh, I've got to do this and it's all on me, that, is a big, that was a big reality for me. Um, and I had to rely on my coaching. Um, and being a coach. And so what I would always tell my players is, you know, to get over your doubt and to have confidence in what you're doing takes preparation. And so to me, you don't have to develop confidence. You just have to have it. You have it because of the, you rely on the preparation that you had and that you've done. And so that's kind of what I did. So I just jumped in and started researching and researching talking and calling all the other owners, having two hour conversations with owners at nine o'clock at night, writing and scribbling down notes. And so that was something for me that was a big thing to get over was the doubt and fear. If you don't have doubt and are woken up in the middle of the night going, what am I doing? Don't do it. Because I think that anxiety and that doubt, it means you got something. It drives you to be better too. So that's what I would say is if you, if you go, oh gosh, is this really what I want to do? You know, it's okay to have those, you're alive. It's okay to have that doubt and to have that fear. So work through it by being prepared and doing your research. I would say uh, preach, girl. Yeah, you hit that nail on the head. Uh, so, of course, uh, I think self-doubt is one of the largest things about it uh, because you don't know, right? The fear of not knowing whether or not you're going to be successful is, that's a tough pill to swallow. Uh, so, of course, working through that and being able to, biggest part for a food truck, uh, especially in my time, uh, is uh, Nacogdoches at that time was like food truck heaven. Uh, there was three other barbecue uh, food trucks uh, with countless other ones that were also there as well. So it's kind of like, hey man, can I compete? All right, can I, can I get out there and bring something different to the table uh, for other people? So of course, but also to you, you know, the market, uh, you know, is a big challenge as well as, you know, when it comes to uh, pricing uh, of the different things, items that you sell. Uh, so, of course, when you get out there and, you know, you're, you have spent probably about a good, you know, $3,000 on, on meat, 
uh, alone uh, and you're getting out there and you're like, okay, I have an event tomorrow. Am I going to be successful, right? Am I going to get out there and be able to uh, sell all these things that I went and bought? Uh, so a lot of times, you know, especially when you're uh, in barbecue, there's a lot of late nights. So you have a lot of time to think and marinate. Um, uh, y'all like that? Good job. <laughs> uh, but a lot of time to marinate on the things that you have uh, and what you're going to do. Uh, and I would find myself countless times, uh, kind of like Sarah, sitting there saying, okay, this challenge is, you know, hey, have I advertised enough, right? Do people know where I'm going to be? Do they know what items I'm going to have? Uh, is my truck ready, right? Do I have fuel for my generator? Or do I have a plug? Uh, do I have everything in that bad boy for me to fit, make, make code and pass inspection and everything for that day? Uh, and a lot of that stuff can bog you down, right? It can worry you down. But of course, if you continue to uh, push through uh, and continue to know like, hey, you're going to find your niche. So my niche ended up being, you know, like uh, the different things that I did in a big fella way. Like my sandwiches are huge, right? So a lot of people, oh, big fellas. Yep, I can get a sandwich that's going to feed me for two days, okay? Bet that's a win. Or, hey, I'm going to do these stuffed turkey legs that nobody else are doing in Nacogdoches, right? So people can be like, hey, I'm coming to get a stuffed turkey leg, right? These certain things are going to help you push the needle forward in order for you to be successful to create your own niche. And yes, it's scary, and it's always going to be scary uh, for every day. It's never going to change, but I think that's the thrill of it. I think that's the thing that keeps you pushing forward uh, to order for you to get a successful name. I think one of the biggest things that was uh, the drive behind my wife and I, but the, of course, we have a, a beef processing plant. Um, so when we had a few cattle at that time, whenever we purchased this USDA facility, which was very small, it was really a meat market uh, in Carthage. So it was, a, uh, even though we knew cattle and we knew all that, it was a very different life for us to go from saving people's lives to processing beef. Um, so there was a lot of things that we learned about that. Um, and. The most important thing is to ask the questions out there as you're moving along, regardless of what it is. Know your business, ask the questions, get the right answers, surround yourself with good people that you trust. And it's, it's um, if you fail, it probably wasn't meant to be. But in order to be successful in this business, I think you must have the passion to do it. You have to. We did. You know, we wanted to do this. This was something we were both really retired. I don't talk about ages or anything, but we were retired. My wife, though, still works. You know, having a beef processing plant is kind of like being a farmer. You know, there's, all, when, there's always a wife that works in the city so my wife is still works. So, <laughs> but that's um, it's very important to have that passion and that drive. There's people out there you're gonna meet. You're gonna have doors opened up to you if you just go to people. You talk to people. You meet people, uh, and and. Doors can be open that you'll never imagine was out there to you. I'm, I got to know so many people since I started this business um, that it, it's, it's amazing what you'll learn about your business. Thank you. Okay, one of the things when I work with clients that I like to talk about when we get to that funding piece and talking about the business plan uh, was alluded to earlier today from the lenders, and that is the purpose of a business plan, part of the purpose of it from my perspective as far as presenting to a lender is that we have addressed everything we can think of that the lender might ask so that we have covered all of our bases. And if we've done a good job of that, then somewhere along the way, I've had to play the devil's advocate and say, what about this? What about that? What about the other? And um, it's not really to challenge the idea of the client, but it's a challenge for deeper thinking. And then once we cover that piece, uh, the next one is, okay, so if the lender has three people sitting in front of him that want to do what you do, and uh, they all have good business plans. They all make sense. 
they're qualified applicants. Um, what sets you apart? Why is why are they going to pick you? So I want y'all to answer that question. Why did they pick you? <laughs> Uh, great question. Uh, what sets you apart? Uh, which I kind of alluded to already. Of course, uh, the name is so fitting, right? Uh, I think for my food truck, and of course, I have a lot of friends that come and work with me uh, on my food truck, and it's always hilarious when people walk up and they'll be like, who's the big fella? And then uh, I come in the back door and the trailer's shaking, and they're like, yep, that's the big fella right there. Uh, so of course, what sets you apart? Uh, I think the thing for me is that, like I said, when I first got into uh, the food truck game, it was uh, a little bit tough. It was a lot of uh, competitive nature going on because of the amount of barbecue food trucks that we had in the area. Uh, so it was really, you know, not only did my food had to be good, but it had to bring you something different, right? It had to be something that sets you apart like we're talking about. Uh, and the way I kind of market that is because uh, the way that I did it, uh, that kind of just ran into it, is that I also work a full-time job. So I'm not able to do it all the time. Uh, so the winning behind that is kind of like, okay, you had to catch me when you can, right? So, of course, I hit a lot of the big events, you know, Blueberry Festival, uh, you know, Fourth of July festivals, all those different things like that. And then I would pop up a lot of times at the Nacogdoches Library or uh, in other little uh, little spaces that I can get in. Uh, and the whole HTO. time, when I would get, yep, HTO, <laughs> uh, HTO, and be in those different areas. Uh, and then it kind of created a drive where now if I go and I post on social media. Uh, and I really took that as my spot uh, where I go and I'll make a nice flyer or video and I would post it and I would literally have people beating me there uh, like for my trailer. If I say I'm open at 11, they know I'm going to get there at 10 uh, and people would automatically be there and I'd be like, what are these people doing? Like, what are they here? I remember my little girl uh, rolled to me uh, probably about three weeks ago and uh, we we're getting ready to do a setup and uh, literally pulling up to the gate. And I got like 10 people like running over to the gate to open the gate. And she hits me. She's like, Dad, what are they doing? Nobody's here. I was like, yeah, nobody's supposed to be here. And they're like, hey, yo, uh, yeah, we got your spot all set up for you. And I was like, oh, y'all work here? And they go, no, we're just here waiting for waiting to eat food. I was like, <laughs> y'all know I don't sit, I don't start till 11. It's 945. And they're like, no, we know. We just want to be first in line. I was like, okay. And proceeded to, you know, proceeded to set up and they helped me set up. So I ended up giving them free food, of course, for helping me. But uh, I think that's one thing is, of course, creating your niche where you got to create that market for me. It's just like, oh, you got to catch me when you can. Uh, and a lot of times that costs people to follow your social media to let them know where you're going to be at and where you, what time you're going to be there so that they can set up. So that's one way, of course, for me that really set me apart. I think that... Um kind of hope directly towards what you were saying about if, we, if three of us were sitting in front of a banker mm -hmm. and we had everything equal. Um, I think the bankers themselves heard and said it really earlier, and that is to have a relationship with your banker before you, as far in advance as you can. Don't go in and first thing you meet him and talk to him about is borrowing a million or $10 million from them. Have a relationship with your banker. And um, I, I'll tell you that is very important. I actually met my banker early on before I even started this big expansion that I did, and he happened to be a customer of mine. I was actually processing some animals, and he became a customer of mine. So I knew him, I got to know him really good. I found out how great he was in the community, great support. So when I got ready to do this, we started talking about it and then we met together and the mo wheels started falling in motion. And that was probably the most important part out of that was having that relationship with your banker because that I think that means a lot. So, I mean, second to that is just having those good, uh, all the paperwork that you need to have with a business plan uh, and everything else that goes along with them. I think you need them. They're interested in knowing that, number one, you have a passion for this business, that they can see it in you. So I think it's very important to have that. Um, 
You know, I think that uh, when we first started out, you know, being a, being a franchise is a little bit different, especially an iced tea franchise that nobody had heard about. I remember walking into Diane the very first day and she was like, you're going to have to sell a lot of iced tea to hit that number. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just not a concept. It wasn't a concept that, that, that anybody know, knew of. And so, you know, we kind of were pioneering. Uh, I think I was the 145th franchise that was sold. Um, and then we were the 60th store open. So we even got open faster than a couple of other ones. Thank you, Nacogdoches, for not having um, a year um, a building permit that you had to wait for. So uh, very nice. And it was good to be, you know, excited about that, the community excited about it. But, um, you know, we, with that being said, you know, we sat in front of the banker, or, I mean, many bankers and talked with them about it. Again, we were in the community, husband coaching a football team that helped us out a lot, but we were always at events. We were always talking with, with people and, and them getting to know us and our passion for things. Uh, we actually went through an SBA. We did an SBA loan for part of ours as well. And do you guys know what the difference between an SBA lender and a terrorist? <laughs> you can negotiate with the terrorists. I will just say that. So that's the difference between it. So you can negotiate with them. So just like what Diane said of being that devil's advocate, there, that is a good thing for you, for somebody to question every single thing. And I remember even talking with Cassandra too. She helped me out too. And going, oh, that kind of made me feel uncomfortable. That question made me feel uncomfortable. And that is what you need to be. Feel uncomfortable so that you can go, okay, that may avoid a pitfall later on, things that I didn't know about. I had to ask questions about acronyms. I had no clue what these acronyms mean. If I took you into the volleyball court and just said, and started talking volleyball jargon, you guys would be like, what? Ask questions, especially in those banking situations, because they will talk circles over your head, and I'm going, hold on a second, what is capital? I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. And so you have to make sure that you ask questions and, and get that information. So. Okay, and another uh, important topic, and we have three very distinct types of businesses in distinct locations, but let's talk about that a little bit. And Sarah, we'll start with you because uh, with a franchise, it's quite a bit different, but it, there's a lot of insight there that will help everyone who's trying to pick a location. Yes, yeah, so uh, HTO had a you know matrix, um, and it was really good. Again, I didn't have a business background, so that's why we went the franchise way. So there was already like a basically a booklet kind of handed to me. Now it won't tell you everything, but it'll at least they at least have an idea of things that you need to hit. So the the traffic counts that they wanted, um, uh, you know, and the different vibe areas. The, those things were very very important. It probably I mean Nacogdoches isn't the easiest place to find it. A spot. I mean, you got a couple of roads and that's about it. And so, um, you know, got a, um, a really good real estate agent that was, um, you know, helping us and, and know, knew the area very well. So he, um, he just helped us out a lot. And, and it was just us driving around and looking around and seeing. I sat across the street at Walgreens. We're HTO's across the street of Walgreens on Austin Street. I sat across there and counted with a counter the traffic counts because the, the information that we had gotten was before the road had been done. And so I'm sitting there looking and going, traffic counts are at 3,000 and I've got to be, or at uh, 1,500 and I've got to be at 3,000. I know there's more traffic coming here. So I went, sat there one day, started at 6 a.m. in the morning and counted cars that whole day so that I could get a true number of how much traffic goes through there. So um, that was one thing that we did, but it took us probably from the start of getting our franchise uh, signing that franchise agreement to actually signing um, uh, to, to get that land probably about two years. And I know that's weird. We're looking for a place here in Lufkin too, FYI. Uh, <laughs> uh, we do have the franchise here in Lufkin, so we're looking. But um, it, it just takes a while. And I think location is very key. Uh, if you have the luxury of waiting until those, those places come open that you, you know will get the traffic, you know will get the visibility, you know have the good vibe, um, those things are very important. Those were the three keys. Again, HTO had a specific matrix to hit. You know, I think it was it had to be 2,500 um, cars coming by or more, um, and you know, accessibility easy. And uh, you, you, we they had a rating system, and so we had to rate it on all that stuff, which I think was great. You know, sometimes I'm like, ugh, jump through hoops, but it really was good because location is key. 
Sarah was very diligent on that. She looked at multiple locations and, and delved into all of those uh, aspects of making a choice. And so, and you heard that, I just want to exemplify again what someone said earlier. That's a true entrepreneur. I'm there at six o'clock, I'm counting on myself. If you don't have that kind of grit, I just wish you the best of luck because you're gonna be relate, we're counting on somebody else to do those things and nobody cares about your business like you do. Now Bobby has um, a, a different uh, slant on where he does business, so I'll just kind of um, open our eyes to that. Absolutely I do. Um, our business exists and we actually are in two places, two cities, we're in Carthage, Texas is where our processing plant is at. This is where we finish the animals and process them, package them and all. We just recently, uh, less than 12 months ago, about nine, 10 months ago, opened up a new harvest plant, which is, is where the animals are, are harvested at. So we harvest, the, and that's in Tenahaw, Texas. So we harvest the animals and then we bring them to Carthage where we finish packaging them finish them out like our customers want them. Or sometimes we don't even do that much to them. Sometimes they want just quarters of beef. Or we have Wagyu customers that want all kind of special cuts. So we do all of that. But talking about the business as being different, in my case, um, well, I did buy an existing business and I was fortunate that I had a, some, a couple of employees that was uh, very familiar with uh, some regulations that I am highly re regulated by when this is the USDA. Um, you have to have that in order to be USDA certified. So I had a lot of that that I had, I didn't have to necessarily know it, but I was directly responsible for that. And it's basically the livelihood of getting good, fresh, safe product out to the whole country. I can sell beef anywhere uh, in the United States and in most all countries across the world. So uh, that, was, that was a big challenge for me to learning that. And then when I knew just about that much about the processing piece of it, we started to build the slaughter plant, which has totally different regulations uh, that you have to have to slaughter animals. They have to be slaughtered a certain way. So here we get go with another big set of things to learn for that. So um, that, was a, that was one of the biggest curves next to a, a probably obtaining our loan. <laughs> that was uh, also a big challenge for us. So um, it just took hard work. And I heard some of the bankers talking about you know, 16 hours a day and, you know, 24 sevens. And, and this business is that way also. You never know when something's going to happen or something's going to come up. But we feel real pleased that we basically, uh, our goal in mind when we bought this business and started doing it was to be able to support East Texas ranchers. We're now also able to support East Texas people that are buying in the store. We're already starting to, you'll be seeing BRK meats in a number of the stores around here, here soon. Um, so yeah, that's, that part has been, been very fun. Um, we've also exported beef uh, to a number of countries. You may say, well, couldn't we use that beef here? Well. We maybe we couldn't sell that beef here, but we wanted to still give those East Texas ranchers a chance to get a premium price for their beef. So rather than them taking their cattle to the auctions and someone buying it at a discounted rate, we're able to take that animal. We can slaughter it and we can process it and we can get them a good price for it. Thank you, Bobby. And uh, Savelle has a different perspective on location because he has a food truck. And we have a lot of people interested in that. 
We're going to have to wrap up right quick. I see our, our sign coming up. So, but I do want to hear from you on, on how you make those site selections for where you. Oh sell. yeah. So uh, most definitely have the mindset of a half trailer. We'll pull up uh, anywhere and everywhere. So it's pretty simple. But uh, of course, just knowing my market and where my people like to, uh, where I normally find good barbecue lovers, uh, is uh, kind of helps me narrow it down. Uh, so a lot of the places anywhere people can bring their family, sit down, have a good time most definitely go in there. So all your breweries and distilleries and different things like that, or HTO, of course, I always gonna pull up there where you can always get in there and get them good food. Uh, and then also too, just uh, anywhere, a lot of things for food trucks too, also happen for a lot of uh, different events or very big where you can come and you can do that, do those uh, different things that you can do with a food truck, so. Thank you. Well, I think we've used up all of our time, and uh, so that didn't really leave any time for questions and answers, but we're here. So um, do uh, network with one another, encourage one another, come by the SBDC. We help clients in all stages of their uh, business uh, life from ideation to uh, exiting their business with all kinds of strategies. Uh, there's so many topics I would have loved to touch on, but uh, this is my favorite part of my job, interacting with uh, the businesses in our area, supporting growth here in our community and economic development in our region. Um, we have lots and lots of uh, resources around us. As you can see, one of the strong resources you have with us is we have a phenomenal uh, research arm, so we can, we can help with those questions that you have as you're trying to get the real concrete answers to will this work here, how does it work elsewhere, and uh, really, really important information. Thank you so much for having us. Thank the panel. Um, you did a great job, and I know that all of you learned something to help move your business forward.